So for part B, um, they're telling us that k equals negative 8, so we can plug in negative 8 in right there and not worry about the k anymore, and we need integral from 0 to 1. We're going to be thinking about this heads up from the next problem, because maybe it applies to this problem, probably not, but since they dropped that hint, let's check it anyway, um, and let's see what we get. So uh, we have, uh, here's the function with the uh, uh, negative 8 substituted. So the first thing I should be thinking is, can I factor that? That's absolutely, if I'm going to be doing an integral of rational function, first question is, can I factor it? And the answer is yes, you can factor this as 1 over x minus 4, uh, x plus 2. So then the next thing you're going to think about, since you're doing integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, the question is, is this interval 0 to 1, does it hit any of these vertical asymptotes? So f has vertical asymptotes at x equals 4 and x equals negative 2. All right, but I, our interval, which is 0 to 1, does not include these asymptotes, does not include uh, either asymptote. Um, therefore, this is not an improper integral. You don't have to write or say any of this. It's just a consideration. So it's not, the integral is not improper. That's just something that we want to think about before we start. And uh, so now we've thought about it, we don't have to um, say anything else about it. But what we do have to do is say, oh, since this factors, that's when I do um, partial fractions. So I want to say that my 1 over uh, x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to a over x minus 4 plus b over x plus 2. And then uh, we can multiply both sides by x squared minus 2x minus 8 and get 1 equals a x plus 2 plus b x minus 4. I'll just review how you do that if you don't remember. We're just multiplying both sides by the least common multiple. Uh, and then uh, there are different ways to do this. Some people are doing things like substitute x equals negative 2, substitute x equals 4. Uh, that's fine. You can do that. Um, I, I just lean on old habits, uh, distribute this out because that's the way I learned it and I'm old and I can't change my ways. Um, and I get this and then I say, okay, if we equate the x terms, the x terms, well, there's no x over here. It's just 0x. Therefore, a plus b equals 0. And then if I equate the um, linear terms, the constant terms, I guess we say, constant terms, um, 2a minus 4b has to equal 1. So 2a minus 4b equals 1. And then I'm back to algebra 2 with uh, two equations and two variables. Uh, simplest way to solve that, well, you know, uh, the tons of easy ways to solve this. Uh, I'm going to choose to multiply uh, the top equation by 4, um, just because that'll make the b's cancel out. So then I'll have 4a plus 4b equals 0. That's just multiplying my top equation by 4. I'm going to combine those together, get 6a equals 1. I wish I didn't get a fraction, but it turns out not to be too terrible. And then because a plus b equals 0, since a equals 1 sixth, b has to equal negative 1 sixth. So I've solved that. Um, system equations. So now I want to start, you know, everything I've done here is sort of scratch work. I'm just working on the function. So now I want to start really writing out the problem, which is the problem is what is the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 8 dx. And now I can say that that is equal to, uh, and I, I like to pull these constants out when I write this, otherwise I end up with sort of big messy fractions. So I'm going to say it's equal to 1 6 times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over, um, a was over x minus 4, so x minus 4, uh, dx. And then since b is negative, I'll say minus 1 6 the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x plus 2, 1 over x plus 2 dx. All right, so where the 1 came from is that really that numerator is negative 1 sixth. So I pulled the negative 1 sixth out and the 1 is left as a placeholder for the numerator. All right, and then these are just ln's. They're technically their u substitutions, u equals x minus 4 and u equals x uh, plus 2. Um, but since the du would just be equal to dx, we don't really need to track that at all. So this is just 1 sixth, the evaluation of uh, ln of absolute value of x minus 4. Um, evaluated from 0 to 1, minus 1 sixth, um, the evaluation of ln of absolute value of x plus 2, 
from zero to one. And this uh, problem is also a good example of why the absolute value is important. Because if, when I go to plug in the one first, I'm gonna have one minus four, it's negative three. If I didn't have the absolute value, I wouldn't be able to do that. I wouldn't be able to do ln of negative three. But since I have absolute value, it's ln of absolute value of negative three. So this is gonna be one sixth ln of three minus, then when I plug in the zero, I'm gonna get ln of absolute value of negative four, so that's ln of four. So again, the absolute value can be very important. And then I have minus one sixth, uh, and then over here I'm gonna plug in the one first, so I have ln of three, this time the absolute value doesn't do anything, but it's still nice to know it's there. And then minus the ln of putting in the zero, I get ln of two, and just leave it like that. All right, so of all these LNs here, there's very easy things to do, like canceling out the 1, 6, LN3, and these 1, 6, LN3s cancel. Very easy things to do. Um, don't do them for the exam. Just leave it like that. But by the way, for people who really like to use their log rules and simplify things, show why this is equal to negative 1, 6, LN of 2. It is. Um, using, you have to use properties of logs and cancel out the LN3s. But again, let me emphasize for the AP exam, just leave it like that.